Cinema's bright lights shine in the European Parliament with a fifth annual Lux Prize. Hello, I'm Chris Burns and welcome to People First, the EPP Group's monthly program on issues with impact on people like you. Also on the program, saving the neighborhood cinema by helping it join the digital revolution and helping to keep European students from dropping out. Now joining us to talk about the issues is Doris Pack, the head of the Parliament's Culture and Education Committee and a German member of the EPP Group. Welcome to the program, Paul Pack. Let's take a look at our first report on this little film contest with a big voice. The Lux Prize, now in its fifth year, promotes a kind of cinema that speaks directly to Europeans about their daily lives. A kind of neo-realism dealing with issues that Europeans face. And it's pointed directly at the Lux Prize's panel of more than 700 judges, the entire European Parliament. Among the three finalists in the competition, Attenberg, directed by Athena Rachel Tsangari of Greece, about a young woman growing up in a factory town. Les Neiges du Kilimanjaro, or The Snows of Kilimanjaro, by French director Robert Guédiguian, is a moral conflict that follows a couple facing unemployment and robbery by a jobless colleague. And Play, by Swedish director Ruben Oslund, is a Franco-Danish-Swedish production that's a tragic comic portrayal of children playing a life of crime and trickery. And Frau Pack, as we uh, usually do, we take Vox Pop questions, and our first question is on cinema. Hello, my name is Lukas Rybka and I come from Slovakia. The question is how we could make the European uh, movies better. I really think it depends on preferences, because according to me, I prefer the art movies. Frau Pack, how can we help European films that aren't blockbusters? Yeah, we do help uh, with our media program, uh, which is chaired by the Commission, which is been voted in the Parliament. We are giving yeah, a lot of money, a lot of money uh, for European films, for co-production, for distribution, because the biggest problem of the European film is the distribution. So it's not about making the film, that's no, no, not no. a problem, yes, we are it's, also, it's getting it out there, right? Yeah, this is also, but we are also helping co-production. But I think the distribution is the biggest one, uh, because the biggest problem of our European films is the language. We have 23 languages and uh, this is very difficult to synchronize or to subtitle and therefore this has a lot of problems with distribution. British films, uh, American films, Hollywood is always in English and it is very easily to spread. And we want to bring European stories via film to the auditorium. And how does that relate to the Lux Prize? The Parliament has created it five years ago to help a European film uh, to be seen all over Europe in 23 languages, which means the, the award which is given to one film, which has been voted and chosen by the parliamentarians. We are the biggest jury ever in the world. We are choosing one film out of three. These three have been proposed to the parliament by a very high of high high ranked uh, jury by f realizateurs and so on by filmmakers these three films we have to see as parliamentarians then we have to make a choice and the one who is the winner will be in the next plenary meeting shown by the president and he will say and the winner is and this film is then subtitled in the in the lasting uh, um, languages, which means in one language it exists. And the last language, the 23rd, is reserved for, um, for, for a, a, a film, the same film done in a, in a manner for blind people. And that is great. So we are spreading the film all over the European Union. And here I'm, I'm thinking about the other way too, is you got all the members of parliament who are supposed to look at these yeah. films, they're being sensitized to issues out there that, yeah, that people a, relate to, yeah, right? This is the idea of this, of this film, right? Not only to help this film to be seen, but to have a film which is showing, going in the, in the, in the topics of our daily work, so to and say. And that it's seen in where here, we, yeah, in the parliament. Yeah, where we have to find solutions for. And uh, the colleagues who, who go and see it, uh, they are really touched by these uh, topics and at the end, so they make a choice. Okay, well this, this next issue we have is also related. It's the battle to save 
local cinemas from the digital revolution. And let's start with a Vox Pop question on that. Hello, my name is Norbert Sander. I'm from Thuringia in Germany. And I want to ask the parliament um, what they can do to support the, the small cinemas um, to not fall back behind the technical revolution of film producing. So what is that technical revolution? Let's take a closer look with this report on that. They survived the video revolution, but can they live through the digital upheaval? A lot of smaller cinemas are in danger, unable to pay about 100,000 euros each to switch to digital projectors. And they make up the majority of Europe's 30,000 movie screens. An EPP group-led initiative in Parliament aims to provide financing to help those cinemas join the digital age. Cinemas in rural areas and small towns are especially vulnerable. The aid, in turn, will help filmmakers benefiting from the digital revolution. Digital film copies cost about one-tenth that of celluloid. The aim is to save not only European filmmaking, but the cultural diversity and creativity it supports. Uh, Frau Pack, how far is this program going to go to save local cinemas? The media program is helping in digitalizing cinemas, but we have very few money for this. Therefore, we are using our structural funds, which are used for, the, for infrastructure in, in, in poorer areas. And I was just in Poland, and I can tell you, in Poland, a lot of cinemas in the rural areas and cinemas in the rural areas are the point where culture is still alive. You know, it kind of reminds me of Cinema Paradiso, yeah, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think this is still alive there. And if this, this cinema will die, a lot of, uh, lot of culture will be lost. So I think this is a good idea to help with a structural fund to, to revitalize uh, the country, the rural areas. And therefore, we're doing it not only with the media program, we're doing it also with, um, with the structural funds. And in the next programs, we will do it even more because it's one of our objectives to help these cinemas to overcome. Okay, and also a cultural and education question regarding your committee is, is education and it's the dropout rate among youth in Europe. Uh, it's down to 14% from 17% in the year 2000, and your committee would like to knock that down to 10% uh, by the year 2020. Uh, let's take a look at a Vox Pop question first on that from a young European. Hi, my name is Mareike and I'm from Germany and my question is how we could help people who don't want to stay at school. So what can we do that they have a lot of fun at school? And you know, I, when I talked to Mareike, she said that she had friends, she knew of friends who had left school because they just didn't see the purpose. How can we persuade them? What can the European Union do to persuade them to stay in school? We have to see the personalization of education. It's much more important than it was ever, which means each child should be taken, yeah, as, as somebody where we have to find out what is his or its capacity, what can he do? Because a lot of people are not interested in theory. Right, so, so, yeah. so you're talking about personalized education. Yeah. That, that to me rings a bell that you're uh, tackling early school leaving that yeah. you had approved in the, in the, in the commission, in the committee. Yeah. And it calls for more second chance education, yeah. alternatives to mainstream education, as well as lowering the pupil-teacher ratios. Can you elaborate on that? There are very good ideas all over Europe how to tackle this, this problem. But this is to and coordinate it, kind yeah, of, right? Yeah, we, we, they have to, to find out how it works. The best practices have to be exchanged. We should give a chance to all these young kids who never know where they have really something to give. And a lot of people have, uh, have to get a chance to find out where is their, where is their force, where is their, their possible capacity. And therefore, we need in schools even better better for trained teachers, trained for, the, for get the personalization of these kids, better, how to say, social agents to help the teachers. I think you had a fascinating committee, culture and education, what a combination, and it's connected to the economy, it's connected to jobs. Yeah. To Very me, interesting, yeah. and, and great we can watch a film festival, a little film <laughs> festival here at the same time yeah. this, this it's month. It's great, yeah, it's a nice job we have. Great, Doris Pack, thank you very much for joining us. And that's it for now on People First. Find out more about the largest political force in the parliament by checking eppgroup.eu. Until next time, thanks for watching.